Hello, everyone, and welcome to Sunday Politics on La Channel's television. I'm Sean sure Okimaloye in Lagos. Perhaps one of the most critical of all the challenges confronting Nigeria today is that of security. With the dreadful Boko Haram insecurity in the northeastern region of the country, the security apparatus around the country has come under intense pressure with the increased rate of kidnapping, banditry, cattle rustling, etc. So the federal government has set up a committee which submitted this report, and from that report, the Inspector General of Police, Mr. Muhammad Adamu, says community policing is a solution to the rising insurgency in the country. Mr. Adamu made a promise to implement the recommendations of the committee. Take a listen to him. The time has come that this community policing initiative must be implemented. And uh, it is this report that we've been waiting for for us to go ahead and do the implementation. And that uh, with this report today, I think um, we are ready to go. A lot of question has been raised on how the state governors are rising to the responsibility of uh, tackling and arresting this insecurity situation in their different states. So. The report submitted to the federal government for implementation. What is the workability? How, uh, how feasible is it? Uh, how plausible are some of the suggestions being made? Community policing, what exactly is it? Is it? How different is it from the issues of state policing? Is there any difference? Let's talk about this. And let's find out uh, some more on this from uh, a retired Deputy Inspector General of Police, Mr. Habila Joshak, who joins us from our Abuja studio. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Joshak, uh, for coming on tonight. Uh, these are some of the issues that have been raised. For you, as uh, someone who has had his experience and uh, leaving the force in a few months ago, and when you hear the IG of police, whom you work with briefly, say that community policing is the way out. Let's start by asking you, what is community policing? Is there any difference between community policing and state policing for a lot of Nigerians who are watching who do not know the difference? Uh, thank you, Sherwin, for having me. Uh, community policing is a philosophy that emphasizes partnership. It emphasizes bottom-to-top solution. It is a policy that entails that police officers must collaborate with members of the public from the point of planning and to execution. In other words, it is a two-way uh, kind of policing that must involve the community they are policing. The community they are policing will identify, along with the police officers, what the security challenges in that community are, and then solution to solve them. It's an open uh, policy where the community will build trust into the police and the police also will be seen to be doing the bidding of members of the community. But um, state police, state police means that um, the various state uh, governors uh, will have to recruit, train, and deploy personnel they call police officers. Uh, to work in the state, and usually they, they are likely to come from that same state. And you will agree with me that um, if you have that, number one, there's a problem of funding, and two, there's a problem of trust. Because as a commission, as a governor, um, having pol uh, control of the police he has um, put in place would want the police to do some of the things he would want them to do, even though it might not uh, be the real or the, 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 the challenges which um, his citizen or his uh, community in such a state even has. So this, this is open to uh, some abuse. And so community policing is the way forward. Uh, give us an understanding of the difference between community policing in the sense of what we have in the northeastern region of the country, where we have uh, uh, the local uh, guardsmen who are helping out in fighting Boko Haram. Is, is that also community policing? Is it implemented in that part of the country in that manner? 
Yes, it is community policing because uh, the community that has this issue, the community where this incident or where this um, sad incident is happening is, 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 is participating in identifying who the criminals are and also working along with the uh, military and other security agencies that are deployed there. And, and, and that's why I believe that um, their input is very, very important and um, their input and contribution to solving um, criminal um, 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 crime in, in that place is, is very, very important. Uh, what they are doing or what is happening in the Northeast could be said um, a kind of um, community policing. But remember this is uh, the military affairs and so there is this element of um, you know, bringing such kind of operation beyond the, 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 the command and control of the Nigerian police. Police officers that are there are working under the military and under the command of the military. So uh, let's get this clear and let, let's get these uh, uh, the benefits of your experience in the military uh, in the police uh, for us here on the program tonight. Uh, would you say that the police force, as it's presently constituted, is stretched thin in its duty in its civil duty? Uh, to police Nigeria as it's presently uh, constituted? Uh, no, not, not constrained in terms of um, lack of ideas and not constrained in, some of, in terms of training. Uh, the minimum training that a police officer has and then um, experiences on the job is enough for him to contribute significantly in checking crime and criminality in any community he is posted to. But like I said, um, the issue of, you know, um, policing that entails that police officers that are posted to a particular location will, will have to state what the problems are, what the issues are, and what the police officers feel that it is the challenges or security challenges of that community is not likely to be the same uh, conception or... Uh, uh, um, the same thinking of the, of, of the community. And so there's a need for the community to be completely brought in. And so problems identified from bottom to top and the solutions also will run from bottom to top, agreed by the communities and um, non-governmental organizations and some of those um, agencies that has to do with safety of the community. I mean, uh, the question I was asking there is the fact that a lot of people believe that the Nigerian police is not the personnel they have is not enough to police Nigeria, considering the over 180 million Nigerians. Uh, it, it falls below the standard of the United Nations. For example, a lot of people will say that the ratio to citizen of the Nigerian police is about one to over 400, one policeman to over 400 citizens. Would you say that the Nigerian police force is stretched thin in their duty in policing the country? Yes, um, this, is, uh, this is true. Um, the Nigerian police, as it is today, in terms of manpower, in terms of logistics, and in terms of um, some input that are very necessary, that is the um, um, technological development and the usage of them is grossly inadequate. It's grossly inadequate because when we talk about the United Nations ratio, we're even including uh, the fact that they have some other um, uh, technologies that they also rely on. But here is almost absence, and therefore there's a need for us, there's a need for government to address quickly uh, that manpower shortage and also intelligence-led policing. And intelligence-led policing is very, very critical for community policing. But if you are to, because you know you were in charge of operations for some years, uh, if you will advise or if the federal government is to equip the police in terms of personnel and employment, how many thousand do you think might be sufficient that a nation needs to effectively police the over 180 million Nigerians presently in Nigeria? 
Well, um, Sherwin, um, it, is, it is important that the number, be, the number of police officers in Nigeria be increased. But you cannot do it in one swap. You have to do it in a way that um, you have a number that you can train effectively and a number also that you can put into the system. But if you just go on a wild um, recruit by bringing in 20,000, 30,000, uh, then there's a problem because um, the resources, the equipment um, has to be doubled. So what I would want to hear here is that uh, in as much as um, there should be some personnel uh, to be brought in, there should also a deliberate attempt, you know, to, 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 to uh, introduce some um, 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 intelligence late um, policing, having some um, intelligence, some um, equipment, and then um, officers having some equipment that um, will aid them in other investigation or in detecting crime. This is very important, and this can take um, with, with, the, with, with the electronic um, devices that we will use, uh, we reduce drastically the number that is required, even though we, we still need um, police officers to be brought into the system. L let's go to the nitty-gritty of the issues of community policing. For example, in some regions of the country, we have the uh, OPC in uh, the southwestern region of the country. We have different groups who are doing ad hoc uh, security assistance uh, to communities, to estates around the country. Uh, is this a kind of way to go in this uh, community policing to keep these people, or how do you hope that this will work, the community policing idea? <laughs> I, I'm sorry to use this word. Uh, for those kind of groups, um, they are idle people, they are nuisance because they are, not, they, are not, they are not taking order from no one. These are people that can do anything with the power they, are, they, assume, they assume they have. If you want to do community policing, you do not need to recruit everybody in the community. You need to have some neighborhood, those that will properly be documented and captured working under the, the local police officers, working under the virus division, the virus police station, the virus police force, and the state. They are supposed to cross-fertilize ideas, collaborate, plan, and execute such plans, basically to con in, in an attempt to solve security problems and combat crime. When you talk about this group, that we have. This group are a nuisance because at any point in time, it can turn. They can be hired, they can be rented, and they can also become part of the problem of, of this country if allowed to continue to exercise those authorities that are left unchecked. And we've seen a lot of reasons and issues and incidences where on their own they acquire this power, acquire some sort of um, ideas that does not um, conform to security uh, tips, and then uh, misbehave. So I wouldn't rather not want them to be part of this unless they are properly screened and found to be useful and be admitted to become neighborhood watch or whatever name, working under the local police, planning and execution and um, trying to build confidence that the police are there for members of the public and also coming forward to give evidence in court and working together to solve um, security issues. I mean, we understand that this is sometimes some standard practice in some parts of the world where the police use uh, some group of people within the community to gather intelligence and probably not identifiable uh, within those community. Uh, would it be right to use maybe the uh, road... Uh, uh, workers' union, uh, some very prominent uh, groups around the community because you, you then ask yourself, how do you identify the kind of uh, uh, trusted groups of people or the hands to equip in this community policing since they are not going to be official member of the Nigerian police force? Yes, um, yeah, it's very, very simple. You know, it's a rural-based thing. It's a community-based thing. 
is very, very, uh, um, crime is very rural, policing is very, very rural. And so in doing that, all you need to do is the community as it is are well organized. Whatever place you go, if you go to the southeast, you see a very organized um, system of policing on ensuring security. But this they do also in collaboration with the police. In most of the cities, you discover that a lot of people want to know what is happening. For every crime that is being committed, outside the trace that will be left, one or two other persons must have seen someone committing crime and walking away. If you build trust between the police and members of the, of the public in any state or any community, you are likely to have a complete union that the members of the public where that officer walk and, and, and stay. Members of the public will pursue him and give him sufficient um, evidence, sufficient um, 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 intelligence and information, give him sufficient information on a crime, and also help in following us how to solve that problem. It's not going to be this All right. uh, Mr. Joshak, let, let, let me allow you to listen to this governor because a lot of the governors have been asked to take responsibility. We had one of them on the program earlier in the week. I'll allow you to listen to him and I'll get your reaction to, to uh, on this. Uh, let's listen to the governor of Nasarawa State on this. Uh, as for us in Nasarawa State, I don't believe state police is going to be a solution for us. Rather, you know, we have a very complex society. You see, even all these issues of language, for instance, in Nasarawa you have over 20 different uh, ethnic groups. So which one do you consider? So I, that's why I'm telling you, telling you I'm discarding issue of language. Mr. Joshak, give us your final word on the program, uh, a, a comment to what the governor said in terms of what is needed locally. Your final word. Yes, the, the, the governor is trying to express the fact that, um, that um, you should discuss the issue of language. The issue of language is simple. Uh, there are common languages that, that we hear. If you go to the south-south, uh, there's a way they speak that others will understand. And if you walk in the south-south, like most of us have, um, it is not difficult to, 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 to interact because some broken English and some other things are right out there in place. And if you come to the north, whether it is the north central, the northeast, and the northwest, when you speak Hausa, Hausa is universal. So what the governor is saying is that um, we should not emphasize the fact that only those who hear a particular language in a community should be posted to that place. If you go to your community to work, there's a tendency of some of the uh, members of the community feeling that because you belong to a, to a particular tribe and a particular small um, enclave, that you are likely to do the bidding of those people. And that's why we're saying that community policing is carrying the people alone. All right. It's a two-way. It's a partnership. Hmm. It is building trust in the people, allowing the people to tell us what their problems are in terms of security than we, police officers, telling them, this is how we intend to police them. All right, we must sincerely leave it at that, and we really appreciate uh, your talking about and sharing your thoughts on the issues of community policing. Thank you so much, Ms. Abila Joshua, former uh, DIG of police in charge of operations. Thank you for talking to us on the program.